Awesome. Okay, it's seven o'clock. Six o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, call this meeting of the Elsmore Planning Commission to order. Uh, Judy, would you like to take the roll, please? I'll let you first say welcome to Frank, our new member. Um, there you go. Reed. Here. Sims. Here. Doden. Here. Stiles. Here. Also present is Planner Denise Swinger. Uh, soon to be here at any second is uh, Village Solicitor Chris Connard, and we're also looking for Rose Pelzel to be here at any moment. All right, thanks. Um, we have an agenda in front of us, um, uh, three public hearings, one for the fire station, one for a uh, replat in the CBE, and then the third is for the con conditional use for the uh, Cresco Labs. So um, first, uh, any, any additions to that? Anybody want to add anything? Um, someone's trying to call me, so I'm going to turn my phone off even though it'll vibrate. The, um, be, be, before you do that, I, I also want to thank um, Chris Sabugin for, for her service as uh, awesome as she did send in a letter of resignation. But uh, we do appreciate uh, her service while she was uh, with us in planning. Absolutely. Th thanks, Jerry, for that. And, uh, and Jerry, this may be one of your last meetings. Um, so thanks for your engagement. Mm -hmm. He's got one more. Are we going to meet next month? Yes. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Take that all back. Okay. <laughs> Disregard that. <laughs> all right, so the next, uh, next item on the uh, agenda is review of uh, the meeting minutes from last month. Oh, actually from August. Or else I just forgot to change the darn date. Yeah, I think you're Those right. Those are actually September 24th. Yeah. Okay. They are September. So that's one correction. There you go. <laughs> um, anyone have any changes or questions on page one? Uh, page two. Page three. Page four. Page five. Four. Page six. I have a motion to approve these minutes. I move approval of the minutes. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'm going to put that as a three to nothing because and Stiles, I'm Sims, sure. and Reed were present. That will right. keep it simpler. But thank you anyway, Frank. <clears throat> okay. Sorry, you don't want to call the rolls on that phone, that, don't you? What's that? You don't really call the roll when you do that. No, you you just voice voted. But I, I mean, if anyone new at the table wouldn't have the biggest idea what the heck that all meant. So. Yeah. Okay. All right, so next is uh, communications. Do we have any communications other than um, for the uh, individual items? I don't think we do. And, uh, did everyone get the invitation to come to the December meeting of the Regional Planning Commission workshop at Sinclair? Yes. Because that's an excellent, I think, shop. So, Frank, I'm not, I don't think I did. You uh, probably did not because yeah. you weren't, were, weren't in the club yet. I will right. send it to you. Okay. All right, next item is council report. Jerry, do you have anything? Uh, I don't think so. Do you remember anything? Transit no. guest lodging. Transit guest lodging. Yeah. Right. Um, and, but they're working. Council's working. What, did they send it back well, to us again? Well, council decided temporarily because of the um, lodging tax uh, that's going into effect January 1 um, is to go ahead at this time and make that just a permitted use, and then we're going to revisit it and have a little bit more discussion about it. Next year. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Next item on the agenda is citizens' comments. This is a time if uh, if you have anything to address planning commission about. That's not on the agenda. Um, there'll be uh, public comment time on each of the public hearings. But if there's something that's not uh, pertaining to the public hearings, if anyone has anything to say here, uh, please step forward. And if not, then we'll go to the first public hearing. The first public hearing is for the fire station conditional use and site plan review. 
Um, Denise, do you want to say a few words about your review? Okay. Um, and then and we can hear from the representatives. Now, this is um, this is in residential C, our high density residential district, and it also crosses into residential B, moderate density residential. And the reason for this is because it is actually a total of 11 lots um, that Miami Township trustees purchased from Wright State University. It is the former um, location of Wright State University Physicians Clinic, which was um, demolished in 2000, sometime around 2010. Um, since being purchased by the Miami Township trustees. Um, the property um, contains a little shy of uh, three acres and um, it is, uh, they're applying for a conditional use permit as well as a site plan review tonight for that. Now I could just go ahead and we can kind of go one by one maybe on some of the particulars of the setbacks. I think for the most part, they, they do meet all of the, most of the requirements for that. But mm. I thought maybe they could, maybe someone could stand up and just talk about Yeah, does someone reason. from uh, the township want to come forward and kind of describe your, the project and the reasoning and um, <laughs> don't all, don't all <laughs> jump up at once. Somebody has to. Yeah, identify your folk for yourself for the folks out there. And okay, my name is Nest in. Nestor Melnick. I'm a principal at MSA Architects, and we've been working with Miami Township for quite a while on the planning of this fire facility um, through when the uh, property was acquired and then the, the levy that had just passed in order to construct the facility. So we've been working with them uh, on this. So the fire facility is going to replace what is on Quarry Street right now. It also has some of the offices for the township. Uh, it's a multi-base station. It'll be a new headquarters, uh, up-to-date, uh, state-of-the-art facility for the fire. It is, it is bound by um, Dayton Xenia Road and Marshall and Herman Streets. So as you noted, this is the site of the former Wright State Physicians offices. Uh, One-story facility, we're looking at constructing this as a facility that's going to last. So we're looking at a 35 to 50 year facility, uh, masonry, exterior, uh, with some synthetic wood siding, metal roofs, um, lots of glass, daylight, really trying to make it uh, kind of low key with the slope roofs, kind of settle in and nestle in with the, the neighborhood there, knowing it's a residential neighborhood. Uh, we didn't want a lot of tall structures, towers, things like that. So we're really trying to kind of work with the, with the site and with the uh, adjoining um, site conditions to make that work. The facility will primarily be fronting facing west, so facing Dayton Xenia Road. It'll have an access drive on the east side that will cut through north to south. So all of the fire apparatus will be discharging the facility to the west, so onto the Xenia <coughs> Road, and then uh, heading to their call for service from that direction, and then they'll be returning uh, from the rear. So it's designed to pull through the station. Uh, the apparatus bays are going to be oriented uh, more towards the north, north of the site to the south of the site is where the offices, living quarters, day room, township offices, training room, all of that, and the public entrance, the main entrance will be uh, from the south side of the site. Uh, so as I mentioned, there'll be an access to the Xenia Road to the west. There'll be a uh, apron discharging from the apparatus base. There'll be an entrance drive from the south, which will be the uh, return entrance for vehicles, and then also the entrance for public parking, visitor parking, employee parking, uh, and to connect that to the north as well, just so we have a bypass so people can use vehicles and access through that way. Am I correct in that in, in most cases, and unless it's a major emergency, that the sirens and lights won't be turned on until they actually no. get on? Does that change? Okay. The revised code stipulates that when, well, first off, when we we do have some designation for EMS calls mm -hmm. that are non-emergent calls, when those are coded that way, then those are non-emergency responses. Any additional ones, the revised code is very mm -hmm. clear okay. that. Okay, so it's just, it's just the e EMS that's not, right. in, in my yeah. There's some common sense fire things, okay. you know, if you, if you call for like a carbon monoxide check and nobody is ill, we're not going to go license. Okay, that. that's, that's what I thought. So I there's some common sense sound, things. Like gotcha, that. okay. Jerry, they laid out 
this the distinctions in, in the yeah that's what I thought but I I just wanted to say because oh, yeah. there's been some concern about noise and that thing. Uh, any questions the uh, I have a couple uh, one was about the retention basin as and I think uh, Mike Hines said that he might have that done before the meeting, but yeah, that he's still he's still okay. working on that. And Cresco, uh, I'm sorry, not Cresco. Um, um, do you have your storm water people here from? Uh, we did not. Okay. Um, I know the site is designed to drain to the east, and we're looking to incorporate as much natural drain as we can with some bio swales along the east property line. Uh, we're probably going to bid as an alternate, depending on what the percolation rates are. We're actually looking at doing some dry wells uh, so that we can actually retain as much of that water and um, go back into the aquifer as possible. I, I, I know that Mike was actually uh, asking for that information as of like Friday or <coughs> this morning, maybe um, some more of that. Okay. Um, well, we, those he, were all since last. Friday. He was asking for some additional information based on that, yeah. Um, okay. I think so. Yeah, so it's and it's fine. I mean, uh, you know, this conditional use hearing can be based on his final report. Okay. I think I think he had some concern about the number of trees. <coughs> trees, in the, in trees the that in the basin. In the yeah. basin itself. So some of them would be okay, um, but too many might cause a problem for. And I guess one other, I guess that's for you, Denise. I'm sorry I didn't get to you earlier. It had to do with uh, one of the driveways was too long. You talked about. The, uh, um, I'm going to have Chris address that. The driveways typically, um, our zoning code says um, 30 feet width, and um, it didn't identify that I could see, but Chris said there is a section under essential services, and he's going to address that. Um, to maybe avoid a variance for that. Yeah. Okay, and, uh, and one, I apologize. There was some miscommunication between my office and, and Denise um, when the question came up of whether or not a variance was needed. Um, under 1260.04b, uh, uh, there's a definition of essential services, uh, which are exempt from the zoning code. And the 1284.04 essential services includes um, accessories to uh, a use um, so there's a the ex exception to the exception is buildings uh, or wireless service facilities we're not talking about a building here we're talking about a driveway which is which is an accessory to the use of the building so therefore um, we don't think that it, a variance is necessary okay. because it's exempt from the zoning code gotcha. okay so that means that the wide driveway on Xenia would not need to be approved by the board of zoning Correct. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Um, we, there's a long discussion about parking and that kind of thing, but um, I didn't see any notations anywhere about bike racks. Is there anything <laughs> planned there? Um, I know a lot of the folks responding. Um, obviously, the, the, the fire department's not going to want to do that, but people coming to township meetings may. <coughs> and um, it might be, it might make sense to add. Um, a, a, a few bike racks. Um, yeah, I agree. I don't think we did show any on the plans as of now, but um, we have talked about it. <coughs> okay. Well, I mean, you guys have bikes too. Yeah. Right. <laughs> 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 Public bike racks. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and I had another question. Um, I, I didn't see any screening um, on the dumpster area. Um, could there be some kind of provision for that, just so the people that live there on Marshall are not looking? Out the front door to the dumpster. Um, I mean, I think that's just kind of a neighborly thing, um, and, and it may actually be in there. I just didn't see that it was that it was included. I'm not sure if that's shown on the right now. I think that may be possible. Whether I don't know if the zoning code has stipulations on what kind of screening. Whether it's fencing, wood fencing, or landscape, I would assume that if you wood fencing right, landscape dies, right? You know? Right. We have, yeah, we have some provisions on um, uh, 
fencing, but we also have some recommended types of screening that you can okay. do. We'll look at the code. <laughs> it's actually in the planning section of the code, so that's why you have not noticed it. And, and I have one more. This is, I'm going to direct this to the um, trustees. I was looking at your, your conference rooms. How do they compare in, in size to the, the one that you presently have uh, in terms of more public interest now that you're close to the town and your meetings and so forth? I'm just curious. Um, your, the conference rooms that are called out on the, on the specifications now uh, are, don't exist in the exist in the facility now. Okay. You have that one training room, which right, is which is multi-purpose. And okay. the one that's called out to, in the new facility is about not quite twice that size. Okay. But in addition to that, are two small conference rooms, one for the fire and one for the for the township administration. Right. Basically, 15 by 15 rooms. They're meant to be meeting for a zoning commission, a BCA, okay. uh, and the like. Okay. Thank you. I have a question. At this point, it's it has not been made into one lot. It's 11 lots. But you're going to be making it one lot. Yeah, the consolidation is in progress. Okay. I know that the attorneys have been emailing back and forth and getting information to them. So I'm not sure where it is in progress. Okay. Done next week. Done next week. Okay. Thank you. One of the things you may notice, because um, this property um, abuts both Marshall Street and Herman Street, it actually has three front lot lines. So that is the reason for why um, there's a 20-foot setback on both Marshall Street and Herman Street as well. And um, the future expansion uh, does not go out, uh, just stays within that setback but what can you talk a little bit about what that future expansion is uh, yes uh, we're trying, we're trying to design facilities and plan facilities for a long term and we did a program we wanted to have an additional bay so we looked at the budgets and the cost value of that so we determined to reduce it by that one day but we want to provide the opportunity that down the road i mean i don't know any of that's 10, 15, 20, 25 years from now, but down the road, if another bay needs to be added, it would be a little bit smaller, lower, and smaller at scale. So we'll to the parking will have to look at what types of apparatus to go in there. You certainly wouldn't bring a ladder truck uh, over there because of turning radiuses and whatnot. But maybe some rearrangement of vehicles, but if additional vehicles need to be purchased additional apparatus, they would have additional apparatus. Okay. And typically, um, you have to have like show a loading and unloading area. I mean, are you were you considering that um, as your own front area for your fire trucks? I mean, typically, uh, loading and unloading area, <coughs> excuse me, would be like for uh, deliveries of things that are coming to your building. Yeah, they always come in the apparatus space. They do that in the apparatus space. Okay. Where do you stand with your discussions with the uh, the neighbors, the folks on? We're meeting with the neighbors at 7:30. Oh, okay. Have you uh, started those conversations? Have you heard yeah, anything? There, there have been an assortment of conversations here and there, not necessarily anything super formal like this evening. Um, but for the most part, um, any kind of negative comments have been pretty minimal, uh, and actually are pretty. Easy. I think the biggest concern we really have heard is mostly sound and light. Shocking. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, actually, there's, there aren't that many neighbors, really. There's just a few on Marshall and then right. the apartments across the or Xenia yeah. and Friends Care, but you spend more time there than you do anywhere else, yeah. probably. Yeah, Friends, Friends Care yeah. won't be, that's not going to really be a problem noise wise. The, the sirens are pointing their direction, that's what we're going anyway. Right. Um, right. You know, if, if realistically, if you talk to our existing neighbors who live right across the street from the fire station, they, they don't have any noise complaints. Um, 
you know, in fact, they wrote a letter into the paper about it, and we got used to it. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Any other questions for him? Okay. Any questions about Yeah, um, I've been assuming that, John, you looked at this from the water and the wastewater side? Water and the electric. And the electric. Have we looked at it from the wastewater? Yes. Have we? Okay. And you guys don't have any concerns? Okay. Okay. Well, thanks. Uh, Denise, do you have anything else you want to add? Mm, let's see here. Just that I would request that the condition be that we get the um, final <coughs> stormwater right off from right. engineer. Yep, yep, in just about one second, we're going to do that. <coughs> okay, so you want the storm water? Okay. Okay, well, there's any more, no more questions for Denise or the applicant. Then what we'll do is we're going to open the public hearing. And so if anyone wants to address any aspect of this, um, feel free to come forward, identify yourself, and, uh, and let us know your thoughts. I'm Linda Potter, and I live right behind where the new firehouse is on Herman. It's the first house on Herman Street. Okay. And my, my only concern, which I think I've stressed before, is um, light pollution. That's the, you know, I mean, sound, you can get used to that, but the light is my only concern. So I don't know what is planned for, you know, where there's bushes or where there's a barrier between our home and the firehouse. Okay. Um, Denise, do you know the answer to that? Um, well, I typically the, the light poles, I believe, are not as tall. They're not very tall, and maybe you can address that. The lighting plan. I did put something in there. I believe the maximum height. Dan, can you come up and? Yeah. Yeah. The maximum height for the light poles is 20 feet, if I'm not mistaken, and that's what we were planning on doing. Um, along the south, uh, I believe we, I think we only have one light pole there that we're currently planning on providing. And that would be aimed toward the interior of the site away from the street. So on the southeast? The, that would be on the south end of the lodge uh, at, the, at the parking lot area. Okay. Just south of the parking lot. Okay. So it would be aimed into the site. Um, currently, we're looking at uh, some pole lights along the drive that connects currently to Marshall. Um, other site lighting would be light bollards um, up by the main entrance, basically. So you're talking, you know, three foot tall bollard that shines down the the Can you hear me? I'm sorry, uh, Dan Montgomery from yeah. SA Architects. So Dan, on the site landscape plan, you show future trees and shrubs along the east border of the site. Is that near future, distant future? Um, uh, it's funny. And as, okay. As the, if, if, uh, the adjacent site is developed as residential, we probably going to try to... Uh, right, there's still vacant property there. Right. Yeah, okay. Uh, have you seen the lighting plans or the site layout? Uh, um. But I'm going to set Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, pretty good. And they have a picture of the light, and you have a. Do you have I don't, a picture of the light? I don't think we do. Um, but does it, does it um, shine down as opposed to shining? It does. Uh, it, it's all. <laughs> yeah. it, it, and if I'm correct, your interior lighting is set so it, it comes. Yeah, off and on. In the evening, yep. um, we expect the, the, uh, the light monitors up the top, uh, just windows. Um, we're expecting that to be a low level of light, uh, just a little bit of a glow that, that you might see coming out of those. Yeah, I'll add to that. I want to confirm with Danny. Uh, one of the planning meetings, 
They were even suggesting that the night lighting, so you know, there's going to be some lighting that's going to be on 24 7 in the facility, but the night lighting would even be red lights, which is less intrusive and less visually disturbing. Um, and that's not, I mean, it wasn't really a concern for the, it wasn't done primarily for the neighbors, but it was done more from a firefighter standpoint. But we thought that's a good good way to address that. As, as you all know, the red light at night is going to be a little less, uh, uh, it'll be easier on the eye than just having white light inside the building for the night lighting. Yeah. And then all the exterior lighting, that will be cut off fixtures, um, always trying to aim the lighting to the interior of the site. Uh, and then on the north side, you're on the south side, right? Yeah, so on the north side, we don't have, um, we don't have any sight lighting or drive or anything to the north. We do have the parking lot, the public parking lot to the south. But again, if that light fixture is on the south side of the lot, shining north, it, you know, you're still, if you look out the window, you're going to see a lit parking lot that's not going to be aimed in your direction. Okay, um, thanks. Um, anyone else have any um, comments, any questions you'd like to address? Uh, okay, well, if that's the case, then I'll close the public hearing and um, bring the discussion back up here. Um, Susan, Frank, Jerry, we have anything else? Well, I just want to be clear. So the stormwater management plan is not done yet, That's right? That's correct. Okay, and so that, um, if we would approve something, is going to be conditional That's upon correct. having that approved by the village engineer. Right. And also conditional upon the replat. Yeah, assuming that that goes forward. Uh, but really, I mean, that's not really even our bailiwick. Um. Okay, and then it's also conditional upon a, okay, and we, a variance is not needed for the driveway, correct? Correct. Okay, so that's not an issue anymore. So, so I think if we approve this today, what we do is make it conditional on stormwater plan. But I, I would also also like to see it conditional upon the bike rack and dumpster screens that can be worked screen. out yeah. between Denise and mm -hmm. and the applicant. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Is there anything else that we want to see as a condition of approval? Okay, as far as the overhead doors facing Zing Avenue, that's oh, again, it's essential services, so kind of yeah. I mean, that's really the there. only way to do it, right? Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> it doesn't make sense for them to be on Herman or Marshall. Doing construction, do you plan on having a fence around the construction area, or how do you you plan on? Keeping wandering feet and eyes out of Safety and security is going to be a contractor that's okay. doing the work. Okay. Um, and usually they'll secure the site what, you know, as appropriate. If it's just work and there are no holes in the ground, they probably won't fence the whole site. But I'm sure they're going to secure any excavation or the building if it's not enclosed. Okay. Okay. Um, we want to put together a motion here to... Sure, I will. Uh, I'm going to just pretty much use Denise's language, I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, approval of a conditional use of the site plan for the new Miami Township Fire Station and Miami Township offices, allowing for overhead doors facing Xenia Avenue with the following conditions. One, an approved stormwater management plan by the village <coughs> engineer. Two, a replat of the property, reducing the 11 lots to one. Three, screening of the dumpster. And four, um, bike racks. Second. Second. Judy, you have that? I think I've got it. You want to read it back to us? I do. This is a once in a 50 year deal right here. <laughs> <laughs> so the motion is to, <clears throat> to approve the conditional use and site plan review for the new Miami Township Fire Station and Miami Township offices, allowing for the overhead doors facing Xenia Avenue with the following conditions. One, an approved stormwater management plan 
uh, by the village's engineer. <clears throat> Two, a replat of the property reducing 11 lots to one. Three, screening of the dumpster area. And four, bike racks. Do you want to say to be worked out with the? Um, to we say all conditions to be worked out with village staff? Yes. Yes. And Sims, were you the second on that? I'm sorry. Um, okay. Frank. 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 Okay, so Doug, thank you. Got to get Frank on the books. You guys sound a bit alike. <laughs> if you're if you're ready, I'll. I'll uh, call it. Are you? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Doden. Yes. Styles. Yes. Sims. Yes. Reed. Yes. That's it. We're done. Uh, hey, before you guys leave, what's the plan for the existing building? For sale. For sale. Mm -hmm. Alright. <laughs> and, and, and you're all welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting now. Yeah. It's only going to get better. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay, we're going to replant first. Short and sweet. Okay, where we at? Which one is that one? Okay. All right, so the next item on our agenda is the replant of the um, uh, um, rededicating, the right, rededicating the right of ways and parcels of development for the uh, CBE to accommodate the uh, Cresco Labs um, uh, facility. So we have drawings in front of us and um, uh, from Heinz Engineering that go through the details uh, of that uh, new road right away. Um, and I don't know if anybody has any questions about that. Um, one thing that Denise did say, or Judy, was that um, any kind of uh, approval here, we ought to make conditional upon the final Cresco approval with the state yeah. so that um, uh, if something falls through there, this will revert back to what it is now. Um, so we can make this conditional based upon their approval. Mm. Um, I have one question, Denise. I don't know if you even know the answer. Uh, there's a new detention basin shown in this. And I was curious, that would be sheet 12 of 22. So you're on the 22 page. Yeah. Oh, so you're looking at the at that already. Well, no, so there's um there's two two really good. Yeah, yeah, that was with Cresco Labs. Oh, you want me just adjusting Cresco Labs? Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. We're Never just mind. looking at the village. Okay, so Correct. now we're just the two sheet thing. Yeah. That's what I thought. All right. Okay. Two sheet. Okay. What about 17? What well, Frank's got there? It's actually such sheet, but we put the two and three together, so it's all one map, so it's easier to understand. So, the CBE land had already gone through a uh, preliminary and then a final uh, plan with Planning Commission back in 2013, 2014, and um, now this uh, is not, we don't have to go through that whole process again. This is simply a replat because we're not increasing the number of lots. It's, it's simply we're just changing the, the boundary lines. Sure. Um, because of uh, the condition with Cresco uh, needing to be at least 500 feet away from a church. Um, that is specifically why we've got that uh, so pressed up against the northwest corner and it spreads out all, all the way to East Enon. 
And that's to account for the uh, Christian Center Assembly property. Sorry. That's to account for the Christian Center Assembly property. Down here. Or the yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, you know it started with three lots and then dedicated right of ways and the replat is is again still three lots with uh, a, just a different change in the in the uh, right of ways. We're not extending um, in the, in, if you look on Green County GIS, it shows a road that goes in and then it goes to the west. Um, it's just a paper street uh, that was filed back in 2013. So this has <coughs> now simply been reduced to um, what you see on this map. It shows it the, and pretty much in the same, exact same place as before for the entrance. Um, but it will take you up to Cresco's facility, and that's where it will end. And then any future development, we will need to extend the road and do any more uh, uh, infrastructure utilities to those locations. But this will just get it to Cresco's lot. Yep. Okay. Any questions for Denise on this? And that's really just this short one page right. mm -hmm. uh, description. Uh, if there's no questions, you okay, Frank? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, if there's no questions, uh, we'll open the public hearing. Uh, anyone have any questions about this replat? Uh, Want to address planning commission about it? Here's your opportunity. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll close the public hearing. If there's no comments. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, do we have a motion then to um, approve this replat with condition based upon Cresco receiving their approval from State of Ohio? Okay, so we're um, you're wanting a motion to approve the final plan, phase one replat, uh, on. to rededicate the parcels and the right of ways. But it's dependent upon. Yeah, contingent upon um, their approval getting approval by, the, by state. the state. Okay, by Cresco's approval by the state yes. of Ohio. Yes. Okay. Second. <laughs> that was Jerry. Okay. So I'll read that back. You have, we have a motion on the table to approve the final phase one replat conditional upon Cresco receiving licensure from the state of Ohio. Call the roll. Okay. Styles, yes. Sims, yes. Doden, yes. Reed, yes. All right. Now, last but not least, we have the application from Cresco Labs for conditional use and site plan review at the CBE. Uh, Denise, do you want to start the conversation, please? So um, this is for a conditional use permit, site plan review for the medical marijuana cultivation and processing plant. Um, this is under the categories of greenhouse nursery and medical and dental labs. Um, we also identified some other areas of operation, but those are permitted uses. However, I do go ahead and put that in there. Um, the first phase of this cultivation and processing plant is proposed to be a uh, two buildings, a total of 49,740 square feet, um, a processing head house of 26,445 uh, feet, and a one-story slab on grade structure, and then a 23,294 square foot grow building, which is a one-story steel building with a glass roof. Um, this, um, I think I have that exhibit for you. Um, exhibit 2 kind of explains their process for that. Now, um, they meet the requirements for, as it is proposed now, for the parking and uh, for the, well, not parking, but for the lot coverage and the setbacks. However, um, it's based on the um, lot being at the front facing 
Dayton Yellow Springs Road. And uh, the zoning code has in it um, that, that parking lots are not to be in the front, on the front property. However, um, there is no possible location off of East Enon. Um, there's like 56 feet of frontage off of East Enon. Um, and we actually, um, my clients went back and made sure that there were 150 feet frontage on this other area, which will be facing um, Dayton Yell Springs Road. There just isn't um, any other way to do this. Um, in order to fit the building the way it is, it's a, as you can tell, it's very a very narrow piece of property butted up against that northwest corner. And for them to be able to expand in the future, um, there just wasn't another way that could we could reconfigure this. Um, so I'll let the Cresco people talk a little bit more about the design, but um, what I'm asking for is a um, an exemption to a couple of things. The parking spaces themselves, which they, I don't think they need to have, based on the size of the greenhouse, 90 parking spaces is just not necessary for, for their operation. Because the parking regulation says whichever is larger square footage or number of employees. Right. And, and you have this big growth facility. Which they don't have that many have people in that it. part of it. Correct. And the PUD allows for, you know, innovative and forward thinking ideas for how to reduce impervious surfaces. And uh, they just flat out don't need it. I mean, they have like 30, they have about uh, 45 employees. I mean, they'll expand later and they're going to need some more. But um, right now, that's not what they need. They, and they don't need 90. So, and then also, <coughs> I'm, I'm uh, requesting an exemption to the uh, parking being at the Dayton L Springs Road uh, entrance um, th because of that same reason, the design. You want it facing Dayton Yellow Springs, correct? There, it just isn't. There's the only place where there's. Well, no, no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what. Yeah. The parking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's as it showed. Right. Yeah. With the uh, the fire department, and I think that Mark Filarama could probably talk about this more with the um, requirement by the fire department's codes with the with the uh, lane going all the way around the building and other things. I thought we could maybe just do some some interesting things with screening. And that would not make it look so not make it look bad from the from Dayton Hill Springs Road. Okay. Well we could just add more businesses up front and That's it, true. Right? Yeah. There you go. Take it that way. That'll, well, that'll cover it up add too. More businesses, you know, cover it up. And absolutely. Thank you. So uh, anything else? Want, want to come up and say a couple words? Yes. Yeah. Do you have anything else you want to contribute first, Denise, or are you finished, um, you think, for now? Um, I just I hope that you ha everyone had an opportunity to see their, they did give reasons why um, they w wanted the exemption for the um, parking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. If. Uh, If you're good, good, can we hear from the applicant? Please identify yourself for... Mark Phil uh, Excuse me, Phil Town is an architect. Um, we also have uh, Charlie, um, the founder and CEO of Cresco Labs, and then Jen from Choice One Engineering, our civil engineer. And as she said, so it's a very difficult site, um, partly because of the uh, regulations by the state, the 500 foot limit, and that's where you get that very funky very narrow um, site. So in terms of the site planning um, dictated by the building themselves, and there's two portions, like she said, a head house, which is a factory portion, which is a permitted use under manufacturing. That's where they do the processing, and then you have the grow structure. And um, so that's dictated by, it's done by another uh, manufacturer, Nexus. And so with the narrowness of the site north to south, um, this is really the layout. There's a hardship with the fire lane, future fire lanes, parking, and everything. So I think we established that. I can answer any questions on why that is the way it is. 
Um, so I think we lay out, and, and also this being off of yellow, being yellow strings, we try to lay it out as best we could, being friendly and neighborly, um, setting back the driveway, putting some planting in. Um, but there's certain areas where there's a bit, um, the right of way for the utilities, or I should say, um, for the utilities that are set forth by my kinds. On the future fire line, to screen some of this is potentially going to be a problem in the future. Um, so we'll do what we can do to screen this as best we can, but there are a lot of things in play with the utility easements in place along that whole southern portion that leads back. Now, it doesn't go along the road, and I'm not sure you mentioned possibly in the future that would be extended, but I'm not sure when that would be. Okay. okay. So any particular questions on anything else? Um, yeah, it's, Susan, you want to start? Well, I had a question, and I think maybe you sort of brought it up earlier about the route. I think this is where there's this big retention pond, and and I'm not an engineer, so you know you have all this stuff about how the calculations were, and so and I'm sure it's right, but I wondered how it is because it looked like you were using ten. Was that? <coughs> Uh, of how you calculate or what are you using for the most amount of water that could possibly be there? So first off, we've located that retention pond in the mostly in the unbuilding mm -hmm. location of the property back to kind of the university, to the north side of the university. Um, and that, what we originally, and there's going to be some final calculations on the Jeff is here, but that location there, the way it's sized on there, was looking at the phase one and some expansion. Mike Hines got back to us, and I think um, we don't have the full total survey yet, but I think we are open to locating that pond. It might be reduced in size where we show it on the plan, and that will take care of the phase one. That's all we want to build. We don't know when it will ever be expanded, how far in the future that is. So obviously, we want to keep costs low. We'll do the retention there. That may get smaller, because I think ideally when it expands, knowing now, the natural flow pattern of the lot, we would be open to doing a secondary uh, retention along the west that might be better to disperse the water. Jeff's here, you can speak to that, but we haven't done all these calculations yet. Okay. But that would be for phase two. So what we're showing graphically for the location of the building, the driveway, the parking size, um, is what we would love to get conditional approval on. Okay. Um, it doesn't. I think. I think what I'm wondering is uh, because I heard something today about when you're doing things like retention, when you're, you're trying to do things for nature, uh, things that will happen, and how we have tended to calculate it based on our past, but based on our past no longer works because our climate has changed, and so we need to be looking forward of knowing that we have more moisture in the air. And, and so that's what my concern is. Are we basing this on past calculations, or are we looking forward? Because we really need to, for, for your protection, to be looking at the worst case scenarios. Because that's probably going to happen at some point. Jeff put off choice one in the area. Um, I think you bring up a great point. It's something that we actually kick around in our office among nerdy engineers for <coughs> um, regulations being here in Yellow Springs or, or anywhere um, may not be uh, conservative enough for what we're starting to see in the weather patterns and the weather patterns going forward. Um, that's probably another discussion for another day. Yeah. But our, our calculations uh, meet the requirements. There's also uh, a little bit of conservative uh, factor safety built into that. Just because the engineers uh, are a conservative bunch by nature. Um, that this particular pond being where it is, uh, work overflow in a really extent. It's going to uh, head across the farmer's field and, and head to the north. So, um, really, what what uh, land is doing today is is heading to the north. So, um, we have some 
factor safety built in above um, the village's requirement. That being said, we don't have a significant amount built in because our clients don't want us to spend any more of their money than, than is necessary to meet the village requirement. So I don't know if that answers your question or not. I mean, we, we, we look at we look at it to make sure if there's a larger storm than the village requirements mm -hmm. dictate what happens to that and that it doesn't uh, hurt the Cresco facility or the neighbors. So should we take that into consideration uh, when we're putting our, our calculations together? Does that answer? Well, it, it does, and it may be the issue of the village needs to maybe look at what their standards are. Because I, I, I sort of assumed that you were looking at what the standards are for the village and and i realize that no one wants to spend more money on something than they have to but we also know that that if something catastrophic happens you will lose more money than you ever thought you would so that's why and we're the planning commission and so we actually should be looking towards not having things like that happen we've actually within the last six months to a year been recommending our uh, clients that, that we, our ability to see engineer, actually look at those regulations and, and start planning for this, this different weather pattern that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. So we've been having a lot of those con exact conversations here. Yeah, I mean, the Dayton Airport had three and a half inches of rain last Sunday. We didn't go quite that much, but yeah. we got a bunch. We, we um, had a couple clients that were over five yeah. on Sunday. Well, yes. the report uh, that you may have heard <coughs> yes. on, on NPR this yes. morning that oh, you know, Houston has had three 500-year floods in, a row. in the three last in year a row. and a half or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, so but, but, but conceptually what you're trying to yeah. do is you're trying to design a drainage system that, that behaves like the current one. That's correct. So they're trying to make the buildings look yeah. invisible. Yeah. For, from, a storm water. from a stormwater standpoint. Yeah, I, no, no, just, Richard, if you're going to talk, you got to come. You have to come in a different. Okay. If, if you'd like me to. Uh, well, we're going to have a comment period. You want to? No, wait? I just. This, I'm not. It's not a personal comment. It's just a clarification of how detention and retention yeah. systems work yeah. and why storm event, extreme storm events, don't actually modify what you're what you're trying to accomplish right. with the process. Johnny, do you want to address this from the village standpoint? I, I can that. Okay. <laughs> Let me put you on the spot. I do this. <laughs> <laughs> um, this lot actually drains three different ways. Um, mm -hmm. I had this conversation with my clients, and there's a, a ridge down the center of the lot on the north end that actually drains east-west, which is uh, to the east is the detention pond that we're talking about. The forward part of the lot, the, the um, south part, actually drains to the southeast a little bit. And so the part that's along the back drains north towards Clone Farms additional field. So there, there's a lot of different drainage going on here, and it will part, probably, as it develop, is developed, take multiple ponds to, just because they all drain in different directions. Yeah. But um, that's why the smaller will probably be fine for um, what Cresco wants to do now. Okay. Um, would you change the configuration of your parking lot if you did a smaller pond? I, the, the main entrance of the building is to the south, and so would they be anything related like to locate it at that, that location for them operationally? And I think just the way the configuration of the site is, I'm, kind of glancing over and looking at it there. It's just, uh, it, that's the best location for the parking, both from an operational standpoint and layout standpoint for this peculiar configuration we have. So, I mean, I would look at it, but I have studied it when some of the concerns were brought up to us, and it, it's, it's, it's a really difficult task. I mean, you know, that's a concern I have as they expand the operation, they maybe they're, with a smaller retention, they could do more on that east side. Mm -hmm. They were trying to, they trying to add keep some it open parking. for the future expansion. Hopefully everybody does well and there is expansion. Um, but just, just a point to uh, the code, I think you brought it up. We were to take an occupancy off the Ohio State building code, the IBC basically, um, and the building being expanded, um, the greenhouse, which is the occupancy and the 
is in there. And so what we've provided uh, at the request of uh, Denise is a letter. Their, their potential employees or projected employees, and they run three facilities right now in Illinois, just similar to this, is 15 to 20 people. Um, at full build-out? At full build-out or? No, at this phase at this, one. At phase one. And just so you know, when, when, even when the expansion's done, it doesn't double, triple based on the square footage. They add the cultivation portion of it is just a small number of employees. So they attached a chart to that. Yeah. But we have more parking than is really feasible, mm -hmm. and we didn't even plan to end future reserve parking areas. So Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Susan, any more questions? I don't think so. How about you, Frank? <laughs> Not right now. Jerry? Mm, um, All right. Well, I've got a list, so. <laughs> Can I ask a quick question sure. about parking? Um, it's my understanding on the parking piece of this, too, because the, the state is requiring restricted access to the building, it's not as if you're going to have much traffic coming in because people have to call and make an appointment. They have to be on a list. So it's not as if you have to have a significant amount of overflow parking at all. And I'll, I'll speak for, for, for Charlie on this and um, let me know if I'm getting this wrong, but absolutely correct. This is not an open facility right. where you can enter somebody. There's a gate. Uh, there's a fence around it. It's highly secure. The state requires that anybody that goes in there, whether it be to work or a visitor, they have to give that information. It's checked with the state. It's verified by the state, and it's approved by the state before it comes. So really, it's just employees going there. And it's very limited, limited, very limited access building. And your fence goes around the entire, the entire property, phase okay? Because I know it's that. Actually, push the fence out so they could add one greenhouse, but okay. they need it, so we prepared for that. And you have a gate that closes, it opens yeah. to let a car in. So it's a rolling gate, yeah. so uh, if you pull up to a call box, there's a camera, you check in, your name is already, if you're going in or you're an employee, you have a card to, um, to go out. It's a gravity uh, actuated thing. Um, the entry gate for the fire department will be a horn activated for emergency to lift the gate. Um, one thing, and it, it's my fault, I'll take responsibility, I, I put a standard kind of boilerplate fence uh, specification mm -hmm. other than that barbed wire. She mentioned it to me, we'll certainly take that off. Yeah. I think there's also, you'd like to see the chain link fence black, that's, that's fine yeah. as well. So that's not a state requirement, having that barbed no, wire? No, no, that was my mistake. Okay, okay. <laughs> that my mistake. I don't think even Cresco does the barbed wire, typically <laughs> on their other facilities anyway. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, we're still talking about parking. I don't know. We spend a lot of time talking about parking. Uh, again, I made the comment before about the fire station. I mean, hopefully you're going to hire some people from town. Bike rack would be nice. Um, if you've got a keypad to punch in, you I can... Think, uh, yeah. Charlie has an issue with that yeah. um, We can certainly do that. Okay, now, so now I have some other ones. Um, odor control. What What is done about odor control. Okay, so in the manufacturing or what they call in the industry the processing head house, that's the precast portion <coughs> uh, where there's dry rooms, processing areas, those are all on RTUs and we use a carbon and HEPA filter system on that. Um, in the, for the greenhouse, uh, it's all automated that there's a control system, but when those exhaust fans open up, um, prior to the opening of the exhaust fan, um, there's an odor suppression ring um, that we misters, and to put this in the easiest terms, there's different companies, but it's almost like a Febreze system. So prior to that, uh, you know, lures opening up, that's that starts missing. When the lures open up to release the air, um, it misses the air coming right out, and that's on all the uh, ventilation rings or fans. There's, so it's big fans on the greenhouses. Yeah. yeah. And we, myself and Karen, made a visit out there on separate, not in Patty, separate occasions in both of the facilities and we smelled nothing. It was just like, matter of fact, it was smelled better than around here. <laughs> you know, farm fields and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But there was no, no uh, smell at all. Um. Second question, uh, note there's a glass roof. Uh, is there going to be straight light at nighttime? So it's a diffused glass, so it's not clear. 
Um, and at night, when the lights are in operation, again, there's all different periods of the plant growth that they have it on, 12 hours here, whatever. At night, they have a blackout. It's an automated system. They have a blackout shade system that because there's times where they want their plants to be in complete blackout even during the day. So that's cold, that would be cold at night, correct? Okay. We, we also saw this in operation and it's slick. I mean, it's it's like a two layers of, of curtain that cover. Yeah, there's and it blacks it out. It blacks it out. We were in the like, garden just right in the middle of the day. And it's key operationally that they do that. So it really, it really is a nice system. There's two shades. There's a diffusing shade, um, which um, is used at certain times when there's a blackout shade. Johnny actually has a picture of one. Well, I know that, I mean, I don't, Patty, you probably heard the same. I mean, one of the concerns I've heard personally about this is, is you're going to have a, a, a clear roof or a, a glass roof, and you're going to have this, you know, the well, Twin Towers lights shining yeah, up into okay. heaven, you know. And, uh, um, if it was open from the airlines, you would see it. I just want to point out, so a lot, there's a lot of misconceptions. The greenhouse structure that you, they use is not a typical greenhouse structure. It's a um, sandwich panel system, so there's a ribbed siding system that's actually insulated, and that goes up to 14 on the gable, 14 feet on the cross side, and then on the gable ends it goes a little higher. Um, so you can't see in the building. It's a sealed side building. It's got a glass, a fused glass roof at top of the gable Yeah. It really is like a butler style steel so building with, with a glass and roof. White mm -hmm. across and then <coughs> So, yeah. Does most of your photo energy for growing come from the lights or from the sun? Well, that's an interesting thing to speak to from the sun. Thank you. So, that's why you do have a glass roof. Yeah, absolutely. So, when the, when the sun is available, we utilize that. But we, we have the, the facilities outfitted with supplemental lighting. Um, as Mark was saying, sometimes you need 20 hours of light. So even in the longest day, we need that supplemental light to kick on when the sun goes down so we get to 20 hours of growth. And then in the summer, there's a, a period of growth also where the max we can have is 12. So in a summer day that's 16 hours long, we need to be able to shut out the sunlight completely after 12 hours and create total darkness in there. That's why we have those uh, the blackout shade capabilities. So at night, if we ever need to have the lights on at night, you can use blackout shades, put the lights on inside, and no lights <laughs> If you didn't, to your point, it would shine like a beacon. So it absolutely, absolutely would. There's a lot of light power in there. And it's more of a, honestly, I've seen some facilities where they didn't have blackout shades on. It's more of a glowing, it's not a glare. It's Because you don't want to lose that. Yeah. So, so when you're running your lights at night, you're going to close these shades? Correct. Okay. And it's all automated. It's computerized. So they have set points. You push the button, and I think it takes 45 seconds for the blackout shades to come forward. Okay. So a person down the road is not going to see this? Absolutely not. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see, we talked about that. that. Um, Denise talked about some screening landscaping. Have you had internal conversations about that? We have. And we, we have a systematic um, landscape plan for the parking plan that I haven't been addressed in other screening, so we'll certainly study it. Like I said, along, if you see on the, on the south side where it kind of curves, and that funky curve came because of this 500 foot uh, state regulation from, the, from the, the church, there's a tight squeeze there, and so there's a utility easement. Mm -hmm. That was also a location we left for the future expansion. I had talked to the fire chief. He's going to want us to take yeah. the fire loop around. Right now, we don't have to do that. So I just kept the trees out of that for obvious, for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Well, I, th I know that Denise was talking about screening up against the building, this, the model. Can we back from the building, but just to hide the fans? Yeah. It can be, I mean, it can sit, definitely sit back a ways, but just, yeah. yeah we'll There's some ideas in front of those, uh, sure. the trees in front of the van, but right. I'll certainly yeah. we'll, we'll talk to Which them. Which is down the road. Yeah, okay. I'm sure this will come up, but I'll just wonder. Um, the lights on the buildings are all 
down lights, yep. security lights, okay. um, LED. We're actually, we don't have the full photometric, but um, Jeff has provided the photometric for the um, for the parking. We have short poles, I'll address it, I don't have a question on the last one. <coughs> like the Antioch University, those real high poles with the high bay lights, these are 22 feet, is that right? 20. 20 feet. And he's got the uh, photometric, it's on, the, I think, the very last sheet, and it's all contained on our site. Yeah. And then the lights in the building themselves, because there's a bunch of security yeah. cameras, they're all projected down the road for the metric of that. But nothing projects past the lot lines at all. So is this going to be an operation 24 hours a day? You're going to be 24 hours a day staffing? No. We have one shift now, right? We Okay. Uh, Susan, anything else? I don't think so. No. Frank? No. Mr. Sims? Yes, I'm, I was trying to get get my um, bearing. I was looking at the the uh, shows the front, south, south front, north rear. Um, is south facing Dayton Yellow Springs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's so, so the thing is, and and I I'm, I don't know what page. I'm yeah. Using. So here I'll, I'll describe. Yes, yeah, because yeah. I'm looking at the fans and everything yes. appear to be facing. So this, like, if you're driving in, this is yeah. Yeah, and I can shoot over a little photo, uh, mm -hmm. axonometric, I have a 3 model of it. But so, so how this, this is called a veil style greenhouse, mm -hmm. that's what they use in the industry. And it, it, you have gable ends, so you have mm -hmm. long gable ends, and there it draws air into what's called a central row, and it pulls that air in, and then it pulls it through the greenhouse and it's vented out those sides. So I know uh, Denise asked, can you turn this? It doesn't work on yeah, the side, right. otherwise it would work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but I, I can tell that's where you're headed with it, yeah. Yeah, okay. And those fans on as loud as the air conditioning unit? Um, I can get, I have to ask, uh, this is Nexus Corporation out of Colorado, I'll ask them what the sound is, but I've been out there when, and Charlie, you've been out there, they're not, they're just big, huge ventilation fans that you have in your hand. It's not a huge motor, it's a tiny little motor with a big, uh, uh, they run faster than they were running when we were there. And they it's not, and each, in my experience, <laughs> and Charlie can probably attest this, they don't all go on at once. You'll have one, each one of those gables is a different grow zone, and they're all set for different parameters. So you'll see a, a bank of three go on, each, each. Uh, veil or gable end has three fans on it. Mm -hmm. And you'll see some come on and then periodically some others will come on. But I've never, <coughs> honestly, I'm being honest, I've never noticed that it was very loud at all. It's not a motor sound. It's, you're hearing the, the wind, basically. Yeah. I can get a cut sheet for well, you. The viral flight fans. Yeah. They can be pretty loud. When you're standing right by them, but well, <laughs> but no one's gonna be standing right by them, right? Because you have a fence around the place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how far back is that? The actual building frontage from from the hills? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or or yeah. 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 Feet back. <clears throat> so that's the one nice thing about that. Yes. Yep. Yeah, correct. And hopefully, assuming there's it's other near buildings residential. going in there, that building is gonna at oh, some sorry. point. Going to be concealed from, from the public. Work, yeah, really. we hope so. Okay, any more questions? All right, thanks. Okay. Hey, Rose. Um, I had. Go ahead, Jerry. John, I remember when we were out there, there was one that was concerned about. There was some equipment setting outside, and that's that's been covered to year. I believe it's in the rear. Rear. Gotcha. All the, all the, gotcha. the, 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 the,
Okay. Yeah, all the, all the uh, um, RTUs, the rooftop units, are going to be on the head house. And I uh, have a note on uh, from our MEP engineer on the uh, desk bolt and everything that meets all the current codes. It's not on the lot line. Gotcha. Sorry. Uh, one, one thing I'll say is, is we was under the impression that it was not a free cast. And that's the one we looked at right. with the full barn style that had all that duct system. Right. The free cast is all in the room. Gotcha. Okay. okay. You're right. I got the head house that looks like Goliath and then the, the greenhouse is like you saw down in Lincoln. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Part of the reason we went with the greenhouse, it's a nicer building. It meets the energy code. They're insulated panels. It's for one of the most important reasons is to mount the RTUs up top because that other structure is lighter. It becomes difficult. Some gotcha. some uh, of their competitors locate them on grade, and they it's it's difficult to fit in there, especially on this site because it's site constraints. That was one of the issues, and why we went in that direction. So I think it's better for everyone. Okay. Okay. I don't have any more. Well. Rose, do you have any questions? <laughs> yes, Where are we in the... So we are getting ready to open the public hearing. On the... On the last item on our agenda. Okay. Wow, you guys are very efficient. Uh, so, if there's no more questions for the applicant, do you have any, Denise? Chris? Mm -hmm. uh, open the public hearing. Uh, this is... Uh, <laughs> The time, if you have any comments about this application, uh, feel free to step forward and identify yourself. And Richard, you want to say something earlier? No, that was just to, to clarify on, the, on the, what happened with the detention process. Oh, okay. I, to okay. Mm -hmm. I guess I do. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. um, We're going to close the public hearing first, okay. and then we'll come back. Council members, council member, do you have any comments? We love it. Okay. <laughs> you guys are asking good questions. We appreciate that, and uh, we're looking forward to this business learning, maybe Friday or Monday, taking the license. Wow. Okay. Okay. We think good thoughts. <laughs> so with that, we'll close the public hearing. Um, for the discussion, Rose, you had a question? Um, I guess please tell me no if you've already talked about this, but the um, when you talk about the site restrictions, right, um, I guess I don't understand, like the, the lot is larger than what y'all are going to be using. <coughs> um, is what what was the reasoning behind what what's the per yeah sorry you want to know why the lot looks like it does yes <laughs> <laughs> um there's a 500 foot restriction they have to be 500 feet away from any house of worship um k through 12 uh, education recreational facility so this lot configuration allows cresco to um, be in the back portion of the lot and meet that 500 foot setback from the church that's up front. Okay. I don't think anybody would have laid civil engineer or whatever. We'd like a nice, easy lot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Confusing. There's a church there. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. That makes more mm -hmm. sense. Uh, any other questions or discussion? Okay. Well, um, then I think we probably need to entertain a motion to um, um, act on this. And, um, okay, so yeah, Denise has her staff language. <laughs> That, that she's put together for us um, that includes um, um, a final legal description of the property, the revised stormwater management plan approved by the village engineer, uh, the revised landscaping plan showing the additional plantings, and I would say also screening um, with there too. I think uh, 
um, at some time. That's uh, in that architectural review report. I mean, it's, I want to talk to them about screening. What we can yeah. Do yeah, yeah, and I think that um, they can just work that out with you. I would say. And then the other one was uh, and a plan for implementing the recommendations of the architectural review plan. That's what That's Denise says. Screening. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, what else do we have? We had uh, we were um, the exemption on uh, the front parking, providing them an the exemption area. on the frontward facing parking and the number of spaces um, with the inclusion of a bike rack. And <laughs> does that have you? With front yep. parking, the loading area being in the front too. Okay. Right. Denise, that's taking care of us and, here. And, and I want I want to specifically say there would be a black chain link fence. Oh. Yeah, if, they, if they follow the architectural review <laughs> recommendation, yes, it will be. So Denise uh, provided this language with four being a plan for implementing the recommendations of the Architectural Review Committee, which included the screening and the black fence okay. without barbed wire. Right. Okay. We got burned out one. We're getting burned again. Yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Susan, Frank, Rose, are you okay with that? Yes. So you've basically made the motion. No. 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 Um, do we need any more? Is there anything else that needs to be included? Do you need to specify the number of Parking spaces, parking spaces. The, the number fewer that you're recommending, or is that Denise, Denise's bailiwick? Well, I mean, I think I put my report, and if you calculate it based on the square foot, which is the greater, it was like 90 right. spaces. Mm -hmm. And so, you were approving 45. 45. Right. right. <laughs> Did you want to be specific or just leave it as your recommendation? Yeah, just okay. <laughs> Frank, anything you want to add? Rose? Oh, no. no. Judy, you want to have something you read back to us? <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> so somebody is going to move approval of the conditional use and site plan review, allowing <clears throat> for an exemption of the front yard parking requirement and loading area and the number of parking spaces with the following conditions. A legal description of the property, a revised stormwater management plan approved by the village's engineer, a revised landscaping plan showing the additional showing additional tree plantings and a plan for implementing the recommendations of the architectural review committee including screening and black chain link fence sands barbed wire and the inclusion and of a bike, bike rack, rack. <laughs> Any further discussion? Do we have a motion to accept this? So move. Do you have a second? Frank seconded. <coughs> All right. Call the roll. <coughs> Doden. Yes. Pelzel. I'm going to abstain. Okay. Sims. Yes. Stiles. Yes. Reed. Yes. Good luck on the uh, with the state. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Next yeah. item on the agenda is old business. Do we have any old business? Next item on the agenda after old business is new business. Do we have any new business? Mm -hmm. Just let everyone know that we're going to have a conditional use hearing uh, in December for the uh, Yellow Springs Brewery. Um, it's they're changing. They're going to do a another location over at the bowling alley. Oh. And so we're going to be looking at those plans and what cool. they're proposed. And so that will be December, right? Yes. Okay. I don't know if you know enough, but I'm an employee of the brewery, so oh, okay. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. So you might have to. Uh, yeah. I will have to refuse you. Have to you so. my, my employment is he's, he's about five hours a month. But he's still. permitted to. Um, this is what I was reading about council. He can 
sit and be a yeah, part of the discussion. Good luck. He just can't vote, is that right? He, he, well, it depends. I mean, he's only working five hours a month. I don't think he should I mean, be precluded from voting. Uh, no, he should not be able to vote. Okay. Can he sit at the table? Yeah, no, right. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming with a lot of conditional use. But I know for council, for not, the not, um, Airbnb, that said that the yeah. council members yeah. could stay there for no, the discussion, but they couldn't vote. Right. What's that? He should yeah. not even sit at the table, right? Uh, he shouldn't sit. He can't okay. participate yeah. deliberate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure. comment as a public comment. citizen, yeah. Yeah. Okay. but not vote, participate, deliberate. Wow. What's missing is second meeting. Okay. Um, if that's the case, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? So move. I second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 No opposed? Thank you very much, everyone.